most login tutorials just show you how the user can be logged in using the provider. Like in this case, we'll be using Google to log in. But in this particular series, I'll show you what to do after that provider login is completed. We'll store that user in our Firebase database in a way that can be actually used in a real world application. So for this first part, what we'll be building is a loading screen that shows a spinner while the Firebase authentication system checks if a user is logged in. If a user is not logged in, we're taken to the login screen. When we click on sign in with Google, we'll be shown this dialog, which will take us to our Google account to sign us into the app. In the second part, we'd build on this and store the user in our database. So as always, this should be fun to build. So let's begin. So in front of me, I have an empty React Native project that I've created with Expo. I've opened it up in Visual Studio Code and I'm running the code in my iPhone 10 simulator. First things first, we need to install our two dependencies. The first one is gonna be React Navigation, which will help us navigate through the app. And the second one will be Firebase, which will help us store our user in our Firebase database. So let's open up the terminal and let's install React Navigation. So we'll say yarn add React Navigation. And I'm gonna go for a particular version just to make sure that this code does not break for anyone watching this video in the future. So it's gonna be with a caret 3.0.9. Once that's installed, we can install Firebase. So we'll say yarn add Firebase. And again, we'll go for a particular version, which is gonna be 5.7.3. And now both our dependencies are installed and we can begin. So the main navigator that we're gonna be using is gonna be the create switch navigator. So let's import that. So we'll say import create switch navigator from React Navigation. Below the class, let's create our navigator. So we'll say const app switch navigator is equal to create switch navigator. And we're gonna give it three screens. The first one is gonna be a loading screen. So let's call that loading screen and it'll point to a screen named loading screen. The second one is gonna be our login screen and it's gonna point to our login screen. And the last one will be our dashboard screen which will point to the dashboard screen. Now let's go ahead and create these three screens. So I'm just gonna create a new folder called screens. And inside that we'll create a new file for each of the screens. So loading screen.js. I'm just gonna use my snippets to create a component and we'll call that loading screen. These snippets are available in the description. The next one will be the login screen. I will call that login screen. And the last one is gonna be our dashboard screen. And let's call that dashboard screen. Let's import these three screens in here at the top. And there we have our three screens imported and our app is now working again. So now let's pass the navigator we created into our render method here. So let's get rid of this view. And instead, we'll have to pass in the app switch navigator here. But before we do that, we must wrap the app switch navigator in a container component. So let's import that in. So here we'll say create app container. And then before we pass that in, let's create another navigator called app navigator, which will be our root navigator. And we'll say create app container. And inside that we'll pass in our app switch navigator. Now we can pass this app navigator in here. So we'll say app navigator and we can save that out. So as expected, we're seeing our loading screen in front of us. This will be the screen that will show an activity indicator while we check if the user is logged into Firebase or not. So let's just go ahead and set up the activity indicator. So in the loading screen here, let's import activity indicator from React Native and instead of this text, just pass in the activity indicator. Let's give it a size of large and there we have it working. Now, as you remember, we've already installed Firebase in our app but we need to configure a project for our app. So let's go into the Firebase console. And here I've just created a project called React Native. Go into your created project and we'll need to set it up for the web. So we'll say add Firebase to your web app and you can just copy these config keys from here. Once you've got that copied, we'll come back here and let's just create another file called config.js. And let's just paste that in here. And I'm just gonna change this up to export this. So we'll say export const config and we can rename that to firebase config i'll close that out come into app.js which is our first screen and on top here let's initialize our firebase app so we'll import firebase from firebase and then we'll run firebase.initialize app and here we're going to pass in firebase config which we'll import in from our config file so here we'll say import firebase config from config 
Now let's go into our loading screen. And here, let's create a function that will check if the user is logged in or not. If the user is logged in, we'll take the user to the dashboard screen. Otherwise, we'll take the user to the login screen. So on top here, let's first import Firebase from Firebase. And here, let's create the method called check if logged in. So we'll say firebase.auth.onauthState auth state changed, which will return us the user if it exists. So we'll check if a user is returned, that means a user was logged in and we can take the user to the dashboard screen. Otherwise, we'll take the user to the login screen. So here, let's say this.props.navigation.navigate and let's pass in dashboard screen. Else, we'll say this.props.navigation dot navigate login screen. We'll call this method the first time the screen loads. So for that, we'll say component did mount. And inside this, let's call this method by saying this dot check if logged in. As we can see, we're getting an error here, which says property navigation of undefined. That's because this here is referencing to the scope of the function that we're passing in here, and it has no knowledge of the navigation that's available outside it. So let's change this up to use ES6 to fix that. Instead of passing in a function, we can just pass in a fat arrow function here. And just with that, now this can also reference to the navigation. There's also another way that we can solve this problem. So let's revert this back to its original state. So instead of passing a fat arrow function here, what we can also do is at the end of the firebase.auth method, we can pass in a bind method. And in the property, we can say this. That way again, we see our app is working and we're taken to the login screen. Now we've set up our first screen which checks if the user is logged in or not and it takes us to the correct screen. Let's head to our login screen. And here, instead of this text login screen, let's pass in a button which says sign up with Google. So here, I'm just gonna import in button from React Native. And here, I'll just pass in a button with a title which says sign in with Google. And there we have our button. Now let's head to the expo documentation for Google sign in. Here, if we have a look at the documentation, it tells us that we need to set up credentials for our specific app. By clicking here on the credentials page, we're taken to our Google developers console. Here, as of now, I have my app selected. If you don't see your app here, you can go into all and select the app that you created in Firebase. Once you select the app, here you have to click on create credentials and click on OAuth client ID. Inside that, depending on which app you're using, for now we're going to set it up for iOS. So select iOS, leave the default name as it is, and as per the export documentation, it tells us to pass in host.exp.exponent as the bundle identifier. So let's do that. Once that's done, you can just click on create. As you can see, our client ID has been created. Let's come back to the Expo Google documentation. And here, once you come down, you'll notice that there's a method here which says sign in with Google Async. Let's copy that method. And in our login screen, let's paste that in inside our class. I'm gonna change this to a fat arrow function and move the Async inside here. Now let's go ahead and copy our client ID that we created and paste that in here inside our iOS client ID. I'm just gonna comment out our Android client ID for now. As per the documentation, this should be enough, but there's one more thing that needs to be added here for it to work with React Native, and that's the parameter behavior. That needs to be set to web. Now let's come to our button and change that to this dot sign in with Google. And let's see if our Google dialog opens up. So we click on this. Expo wants to use google.com to sign in. Click on continue. And you see you're taken to the Google login screen. So up until now, we've set up our Google login with the Expo server, but we've not added the user to our Firebase database or our Firebase authentication system. This is what I'll help you do in the second part. Till then, I hope you guys try this out.